So welcome everybody, good afternoon. It's my pleasure to present to you today the Biomed IT project on behalf of the Personalized Health Informatics Group and of course on behalf of all the Biomed IT network collaborators. Biomed IT is an integral part of the Swiss Personalized Health Network Initiative and therefore I would like to start with some key facts on SPHN. SPHN follows a decentralized approach. That means the data is copied from the existing data sources, meaning from the data provider sites, in a project-specific manner. So we are not building a central data lake. Data is only gathered when it's associated with a specific project. SPHN is establishing a national infrastructure. And that's not one national infrastructure. It's actually an infrastructure network consisting of various modules and components working towards a fair use of health-related data for research. And with fair, we mean findability, accessibility, interoperability, and reusability of health-related data. SPHN is focusing on a democratic access of clinical data, meaning breaking the monopoly. We aim to make it possible for any researcher in Switzerland, also for those who are not working at a particular data provider institute, for example, in a university hospital, to get access to this data and use it for their research projects. And last but not least, this is why we are here today, we are establishing within the framework of SPHN a secure and protected IT environment, the Biomed IT Network, for the analysis of sensitive data. This environment fulfills the stringent ethical, legal, regulatory requirements when it comes to dealing with sensitive patient data. When we look at the data flow from a researcher's perspective who has a research idea, it's fairly simple. Researchers would like to be able to identify the data they can use for their research projects. So they want to find the data, then they request the data, and ideally receive the data and use it for their research projects. But you all know that in the real world, this is not as straightforward as we would wish for. And we, the Personalized Health Informatics Group, together with all the collaborators and partners in the SPHN network, are working hard to actually streamline this process in order to make the described data flow possible. So let me give you some examples. Concerning the findability of data, we are envisioning, for example, metadata catalogs, maybe one on the clinical side for routine data that are available in hospitals, but also information about available data sets that have already been used in research and would be available to be reused by other researchers. Moreover, we would like to give researchers the possibility to determine the feasibility of conducting a research project by implementing a distributed federated query system. This system allows researchers to run simple queries against a subset of health-related data of all five university hospitals, providing a reliable information of the availability of data, samples, or patients for planned research projects. When it comes to the requesting of data, data at the moment, the governance of the data is with the data provider. So for example, if you would like to include some routine data from a, a university hospital, researchers would request the data from the university hospital. And the university hospital decides if the, the data can be used for the research project because it's their responsibility. Also, when it comes to the data request, the university hospitals would have to find the data in their data lake, they would like to extract the data, they have to process the data, and there are several um, conditions attached to that. So first of all, the patients of, the patients of course have to give consent that they want their data to be used in research projects. When it comes to receiving data, there are some regulatory or legal steps that have to be done. Normally there is a data transfer and use agreement to be signed between the data provider and the data recipient. Also, every project that doesn't use anonymized data has to be approved by a cantonal or cross-cantonal ethics committee. So we need ethics approval for every project. And when it comes to receiving data, data should be securely transferred to the um, recipient um, as we're talking about sensitive 
health data, health-related data, although it's coded, although it's de-identified, it's still sensitive data and the transfer should also um, be handled accordingly. And when we think of using data for research, this means we need IT environments, IT systems that are capable of handling sensitive data. But on the other hand, we, own, we not only want the protection and the security of these systems, we would also like cutting edge technology, right? If we want to analyze the data, we would like to have it done as we would have it done with our mouse data or any other data. The personalized health informatics group, as Sylvia already said, is in charge of the SPHN Data Coordination Center and the Biomed IT project. And basically it is our responsibility to coordinate, implement the Swiss Personalized Health Network initiative uh, at the technical core, so to say. So the basis of this um, SPHN is built by the collaboration agreements between SPHN and the university hospitals. You see that here on the left side. So these are collaboration agreements we agreed with the hospitals on certain conditions and on milestones that have to be achieved in order to reach the goals of the initiative. And actually, many of the aspects concerning finding data, requesting data and receiving data are covered in these collaboration agreements. On the other side, you see the SPHN driver projects. You probably heard of these driver projects before. These are the big collaborative projects um, which help us basically to build the national infrastructure network, but also to show us the needs and ex expectations from the researcher side in order to help us build the infrastructure in a way that it makes sense also um, to use for research later. The SPHN infrastructure development projects are smaller projects focusing on specific topics. And the idea here is that if one group who is working on such an um, infrastructure development project figures out how to do it, the other can also implement this. Um, in the other um, um, sites. And of course, the Personalized Health Informatics Group, we have also a project portfolio. Um, for example, um, the Metadata Catalog would be on that list, but also the Federated Query System and other projects are on, on our um, table, basically. The DCC, the Data Coordination Center, has help of different working groups, various working groups. We have the Clinical Data Semantic Interoperability Working Group and the Hospital IT Working Group, on, rather on the hospital side. On the Biomed IT side, we have the Biomed IT Interoperability Working Group. We will see some of their products uh, later. The Biomed IT Security Working Group. And of course, we have um, advice from the research side through the Bioinformatics and Data Analytics Working Group. And last but not least, in the middle you see, this is the Biomed IT um, network and I would like to take some minutes to um, introduce to you in detail what the Biomed IT network is. The Biomed IT network provides researchers from all over Switzerland with access to a secure and protected IT environment to be able to analyze, to process their data when it's health or health related sensitive human data. Biomed IT builds on existing infrastructures. So the three nodes included in the Biomed IT network at the moment are the scientific IT services from the um, ETH in Zurich, the scientific um, IT services from SICOR, University of Basel, and core IT, vital IT located in Lausanne with the Swiss Institute of Bioinformatics. The data providers, hospitals, universities, technology platforms, cohorts, registries, whoever is a data provider pushes data into the Biomed IT environment. And the researcher on the other side gets access to specific data for his or her specific research project through the, co the control of the data coordination center. And I will tell you in detail how that works. Introducing the nodes first, so the secure and protected computing environment in the three Biomed IT nodes, Core IT, SciCore and SIS. I already mentioned it. It's cutting edge technology, compute, cloud, high performance computing, storage, high security standards to handle biomedical data, multi-tenancy setup. We have isolated projects, storage and compute so that the data is not being mixed. 
remote desktops, a secure backup, and of course, importantly, scientific and bioinformatics support for researchers from the nodes and their staff. I don't want to go into the details and the, the technical details of um, the equipment, so to say, of the three nodes, but I put it there in, um, in case you want to have a look at it later. So these are our three nodes and they are connected. And this is what we work on when we, when we work on the technical interoperability. There is one information security policy underlying um, this entire system. So all the nodes and um, experts agreed on an information security policy and this is the Biomed IT standard. Also, the Biomed IT network is accessible to all researchers in Switzerland. From every university, everybody can access the Biomed IT network, use the network in order to carry out a research project on Biomed IT. The project lead has the possibility to register through the Biomed IT portal. The Biomed IT portal is the central entrance of the Biomed IT network. And there is a single sign-on which uses the switch edu ID and a two-factor authentication. So it doesn't really matter if the data is located in Basel or in Zurich or in Lausanne. The, there is a central login through the Biomed IT portal. The project lead can then also um, create um, register users that will work with him or her on the respective project. When we look at the data provider side, hospitals, as I said, or PHRT centers, for example, the genome center or the proteomic center, the co cohort data, registry data, these are the data that come into the Biomed IT network. And we are working very hard on data standardization. So semantics, data formats, metadata, this all has to be harmonized, made interoperable before we use the data for research in order to make life easier for the researcher or even to make research projects possible at all. Data sharing, I said that before, we need consent of the patients, we need an ethics approval, we need a data transfer and use agreement in normally before we can start with the data transfer. Once all of this is in place, data is transferred in a standardized way, encrypted end-to-end -end from the data providers to the closest, to their closest Biomed IT node. If the processing node is, for example, Core IT in Lausanne and the isolated project space where the data should go in is located in Lausanne, the node in Psycho, for example, transfers the data to the Lausanne node, same would be true if the hospital in Zurich transfers data, they would go through the SIS node, Biomed IT in Zurich, and SIS would transfer the data to Core IT, where the isolated project space for this data is. Decryption, the key is with the researcher. And once the data arrived in the isolated project space specific for this project, it can be decrypted, then there is the compute environment, cutting edge technology, cloud computing, big data storage, high performance computing, whatever the researcher needs. And the researcher can access from wherever he or she sits via remote desktop to this compute environment as they would do the analysis in their home institution or in their local laptop. And of course, the software and the um, requirements they need is tailored to every specific project. So the nodes offer the services, they speak with the project leads before, and then the setting is adjusted accordingly. How is data transferred from the data provider to the Biomed IT network? The Biomed IT interoperability working group, which I introduced to you before, developed a transfer tool for this, standardizing a secure data transfer. Basically, it's packaging of data and metadata in a standardized way. They transfer it to the Biomed IT system, end-to-end -end encryption. And this tool is basically uh, in the testing phase at the moment. It's open for testing. So if any volunteers, um, um, we, we are happy to receive comments. We already um, work with the hospitals on this, but of course, this tool can be tested by any data provider who wants to feed, who wants to feed data into the Biomed IT system. The second thing, the 
Interoperability Working Group developed is the Biomed IT portal. The Biomed IT portal is the one central way to Biomed IT, improving the security of data while making it easier to work with. And it is my great pleasure to introduce to you Kevin Sayers. He's the chair of the Interoperability Working Group, and we will um, be able to see a live demo of this portal right now. Yeah, so as Katrin described, um, what we're trying to develop is a single point that people can access the BioMIT networks to do their analyses and work with their data. And so this is meant to centralize the access to all the different underlying BioMIT nodes. So instead of having to log into each of the nodes, you have one place to go and access them. What we've done is set this up using Switch Edge OID, and this is available to all Swiss researchers. Uh, and this will provide you a single login basically to the different BioMIT nodes. In addition to the Azure ID, we've also have a two-factor authentication, uh, which can be done either using SMS or just a standard app that generates a one-time passcode. And then once you're logged in, you're provided information regarding both the BioMIT network as well as central resources such as uh, GitLab for code sharing or versioning, uh, container registries to upload containers you need for your analyses, as well as additional documentation. Uh, and most importantly, you provided your project space, and this is where you would have the uh, remote desktops that you could use to work on your data. So going into projects, you see a list of all the uh, projects your username has access to. For example, this has the, the demo project. And assuming you're an authorized user, you'll see the various resources that are available to you within this project. So for example, here, launching a remote desktop. Um, and then once you're in the desktop, you're able to work as if you were um, in your local uh, notebook or your own cluster. Uh, so you have access to a graphical interface as well as the command line. And so there you could then work on with either something like um, Excel or Jupyter Notebooks or R. Basically, you have the ability to work on the sensitive data with the ease of use in your browser, but also still having the security of it being hosted in a binary T node. Uh, so for example, just here, can run a basic Python uh, notebook to do some data analysis. So again, it's all in browser, but you still have the security of the BioMIT nodes. And this is the real aim of the portal is to centralize all this. So you have one place to log into um, and run your analyses with kind of the full resource of the BioMIT behind you. And so that's kind of the, the features at the moment, but it's also going to be expanded uh, drastically, hopefully, over the coming years. Um, we anticipate people being able to start using this kind of early 2020. Um, that's the first stage is this real centralization of the BioMIT resources for researchers to work on their SPHM projects. Thank you, Kevin. So what we are doing at the moment is basically, we bring data into the BioMed IT network and we collect it in, uh, we store it or we, we um, move it forward into one single place. This is how we do it. It's a federated infrastructure with a central access control in a single compute environment, single here, in this case, the core IT, vital IT node. And you can run your containerized workflows or do any other analysis it, at core IT where the data is compiled, so to say. But we're also investing into future research and work towards a federated compute environment. So basically, hospitals or other data providers would be able to just push the data to the closest node. It would, be, it would stay there. And you could do a federate compute using containerized workflows, whatever, over this um, environment. So it's bringing the analysis to the data rather than bringing the data to one point of analysis. This is um, how the Biomed IT network was conceptualized from the beginning. We're not using it so far, but it's going to be, uh, it's intended to be used like this. So I'd like to summarize to you the different um, perspectives 
I basically I mentioned nearly everything which is on the slides, but I would like to um, go through them again. I'm showing you the user perspective. So as a user, basically, you see the node infrastructures. Of course, you get in contact with the node. You talk to them um, according, um, telling them what you need for your project. They have the hardware, the software, the technical expertise um, um, to service you. Cutting edge technologies, we talked about that. We have the Biomed IT portal as the future one stop shot one stop shop providing you access to the resources of Biomed IT and SPHN. Concerning data accessibility, interoperability and quality, these, this is all in our, um, on our uh, to-do list basically. We're working on that, the um, personalized health informatics group with the help of these working groups I showed you. And the, then concerning the analysis, of course, this is also um, what you see. You define the software tools, uh, the software stack, whatever you want, workflows, containers, containers, or orchestration. It's all there if you need it for your project. And as I said, the query system or the data catalogs, we locate, you can locate sources of potentially useful data for researchers, ideally through the Biomed IT portal. And of course, we have many things happening behind the scenes. For example, the infrastructure, you don't really know what the nodes um, offer you until you need it. And um, also the connections from the data provider to the Biomed IT, work, uh, the Biomed IT network, this is a lot of uh, work on, in, in the back. Also the user management is a lot of work in the back. Then the data transfer, it's the key management system, the routing of the data that every data just arrives in that isolated project, project space where it's destined to, to arrive and not nowhere else. And of course, the register system linking projects, users, data sets, authorization, monitoring and control. This is all running behind the scenes. And now looking at it from a security perspective, I already told you we have the information security policy. This is a document that um, will be revised from time to time. We have the, um, the um, security working group also who is in charge of this and um, Martin Fox is chairing this. A working group. The data transfer, of course, also a highly security, um, important um, security aspect that the data is sent in an encrypted form and that it is sent in a standardized way. Access to node infrastructure, access to project data, also here many security aspects in it and also monitoring all transfers, login, file access, everything is locked and monitored. So basically, Biomed IT is taking care of many aspects that the researcher does not have to care about anymore so that the researcher can concentrate on research. Um, but a researcher should be aware that handling biomedical information, sensitive human data is different from handling mouse data. And this is why the Biomed IT network, Sophia from um, SciCore, Diana from SIS and Heinz from Core IT came up with a training which is available as a classroom course and um, um, taking place every um, couple of weeks or months, but also available on demand as a video tutorial, giving you a very broad overview what it takes and what it means to handle sensitive data concerning data privacy and IT security. There is also an online exam, and this online exam is actually mandatory for every user who wants to log into the Biomed IT system. You find information about this training at the URL below. So to conclude, Biomed IT provides data resources and a network of secure data nodes for doing data-driven research on sensitive biomedical data. It is a secure and efficient solution for cross-institutional analysis of sensitive data sets since people in the same team but from different institutions can work on the same data set in one place from different um, institutions. Biomed IT lowers computational boundaries for research with health-related data. We, we also saw um, uh, things about this. And Biomed IT joins forces since we are building on existing infrastructures, but building a top layer onto it. We try to join forces. We try to build and utilize synergies. And we really would like to establish Biomed IT as the national network to the, the place to use this um, um, to analyze biomedical data because um, 
it is um, a national effort and it's a part of the SPHN and it makes sense that we um, share our um, ex experience and um, put it all together in this one place. Our biggest challenges are basically scalability, sustainability, and the cultural shift. Scalability in terms of we don't know what the future brings. We don't know what kind of research will be done in the next five years. Is it more people from different groups working on the same projects? Is it going backwards saying, okay, it's, it's only one institution working on one data set. We don't know what we have to expect. So this is a, a, a challenge. In, ter in terms of sustainability, we would like, um, to have this system up and running, but we would like to have it running beyond the phase of the second phase of SPHN because we do not want to build something here which is which then is not useful anymore or not usable anymore when the support of SPHN is not there anymore. So we try to bring sustainability in the system in all the aspects, be it in the hospital, but here also be it, it, it being in the Biomed IT nodes. And the cultural shift, this is basically something we experience in SPHN um, throughout all of our activities. Their data sharing is not easy. Researchers um, are not very used to data sharing and data sharing is especially not easy when it's sensitive um, human data we are dealing with. But I think we, we did a lot of progress. We made a lot of progress in the last two years and I'm pretty confident that we will get there. Okay. I would like to acknowledge all the people um, from the Biomed IT network. So first of all, of course, the Biomed IT project team at the fee group at the Data Coordination Center, the interoperability working group. Um, this is basically Kevin and um, one of um, one um, employee at every node. And the Biomed IT board, who has the responsibility of the Biomed IT project, of course, our uh, participating nodes, the ETH, SIS, SciCore, and Core IT, the SIB Data Protection and Security Board, and all Biomed IT network collaborators and users. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. I am opening the, uh, the floor for questions. Um, I would like to ask Martin also to go in front together with Kevin in case there are technical questions. Um, are there any questions here in the audience? Yeah. Thank you very much for the presentation. I just have one question about the international cooperations. For example, we have users, a research group abroad, not in Switzerland. Will they be able to use the service to have access to the data, sensitive data, of course? And uh, yes, and managing doing analysis to the data without physically transferring, like you said, bring the analysis to the data. So. Um, there are also node heads uh, present in, in the room, but I try to um, answer you, your question. So basically it is possible, but you would have to go through a guest account of your university. So basically if you have a guest account for um, international collaborators, it is no problem for them to access the data. And they can do analysis within their service without yes. actually getting the data. Yes. Okay. This is the idea. Nobody gets the data. Data stays in the node and people log in and do the analysis there. And if we want equal access to their data, would that be also something I mean, to consider or not? Well, I think in the future this would definitely be something to consider. But I think maybe, Kevin, this is, is, is your area, whether you want to? Yes, I mean, we're definitely trying to develop further solutions to basically streamline these processes. Uh, so definitely something that we technically could do. Um, it's more kind of the regulatory stuff, but we definitely are interested in bringing as many different ways to send analyses out to different data sets, uh, as well as anal analyze those within the BioMT network. Um, so we're kind of trying to come up with a, a menu of different options and how you can run analyses. So would it be possible also from the, 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 the team to offer some guidance for the other research team abroad? For example, how they build up their node and to physically store data there, we have the access. So we have equal data use, I mean, in a way, in a fair way. Otherwise we could only share our data, we could not get access to their data. Would that be a, 
Well, let's put it like this. It's not on our to-do list for the next one and a half years, but it's clearly something. I mean, if, if this is the needs and expectation from the researcher side that we would have to streamline these processes also across national borders, I don't think that um, there is a, a big obstacle, obstacle to do, so we would just have to figure out how. Okay, thank you. Um, following up on the um, um, discussion before, so in order for the external researchers to know where to look, then do you also uh, offer some query methods and uh, how do you do so? Yeah. Yes, so basically we have two focal points here. So one point, one focal point is the clinical data in, a, in the university hospitals. So there basically we are working on a semantic strategy we are trying to define, harmonize the data semantics or um, what, um, for the data that comes out of the um, university hospitals and goes into research. So basically we are working towards a catalog here that a researcher knows, okay, what is the data? What do the university hospitals have? What could I request for my research project? And we would like to go further than this. We would really like to offer a metadata catalog of additional data they can get from the hospitals. This is the one focus. The other focus would be once we have several data sets on Biomed IT or anywhere else, cohorts, registries, we would like to have metadata catalogs on those as well. So at the moment, as I hear it, Swiss researchers are basically working with many of these inventories or um, um, places of international data sets, but we would like to establish something for equivalent for Switzerland that you can see what data sets are there. Does it make sense that I reuse them for my research or do I need different data? So this is basically the also a metadata catalog on the research data set side. And there are other activities in Switzerland going on currently. So there is a group in Neuchâtel who is working on a metadata catalog of the basically the statistic data, which is there. It's kind of reference data or data you pull in into your project. So there is a catalog in a development at the moment. And um, so I think there are many of these initiatives going on in Switzerland. They try to bring data into a, in a visible form that researchers are able to browse these catalogs and really see what's there. So the find, increasing the findability, I think we're still at the F at the beginning, um, is our is a major focus um, at the moment. Actually, then uh, it entirely depends on uh, how collaborative the data provider will be, right? And uh, so you provide kind of the guidance in terms of the semantic, so that, uh, for instance, in the future the data will be created following the semantic, so that uh, the interoperability will be ensured. Is that? Yes, okay. that is correct. And you, the first sentence was also very true, what you said. It's dependent on the, the data provider. Yes. <laughs> I think we also need to be aware that it's not just clinical data from hospitals. We've also got a huge pool of data from past research projects. We've got coming online more and more data from uh, sources like MeData. So in the, in the future, the, the, the available pool of data is, is going to be very wide and some of this stuff is obviously going to be much easy, more easily shared and made shareable than perhaps some others. Uh, hello. Regarding tailoring the node to the needs of the projects, um, is there a guideline if a project requires, for example, commercial software that need a license? How should, what, what should the node in these cases? We haven't uh, got a definitive answer there. I guess the answer in, in short will depend on uh, how much it costs. If we're talking about something uh, like image analysis software, uh, which most people probably are aware of, which is you know, 30 to 40,000 francs a seat, um, then that's a different story than if we are just talking about installing an instance of Microsoft Office. I'm looking around the room here uh, in Basel. There are more questions. If not, let's check online if there are questions. Don't look like it. No. 
So if there are no questions here in the room in Basel or online, I think it must have been all very clear and understood. And uh, so thank you very much for all those who've been attending now throughout the year, clapping, cheering, and plainly being present and interesting in our DCC seminars and training series. We'll be reaching out to you with this recording and also with the new dates for next year. Thank you very much and have a good time.